Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Alright, hi everyone, welcome to another recommendations video. Today we are doing, let's see if I can pronounce this right, epistolatory romances, aka letter writing or email writing, aka pen pals, whatever you want to call it. Um, this video will have a mixture of those. We'll have a few that are the legitimate like letter writing ones. We'll also have some email writing ones, some hidden identity. All of these are wrapped up together. Now, I actually don't have <clears throat> a ton of recs for this one that I've read. So in this one, I have eight recommendations that are ones that I've read and three that are ones that I will just recommend, though I haven't read. They're ones that are maybe on my TBR, maybe not, but I will share them with you either way. Okay, so that's how we will do this one today. But yeah, uh, before I dive in, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. I put up new videos three to four times a week. I also have a Patreon where there is an extra video that goes up about every week to 10 days. Um, so definitely make sure you're subscribed and check out those things if you like what I do here. So let's go ahead and get into these. All right, so first off, we of course have to start with a couple historicals. Now, I'm sure there are more of these. Like I said, I just haven't read a ton of them. Sorry, that is my scrunchie, by the way. I don't usually wear a puffy scrunchie, so I keep thinking there's something behind me, but it is just my zebra scrunchie, or my cheetah scrunchie, so don't mind that. Um, I do have just a couple historical ones to share with you. So, and they're probably both ones that those of you who love epistolatory romances, you probably already know these because they're the two that everyone recommends. But I don't care. I like them. So we, of course, have Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Claypez. And this is about our youngest Hathaway daughter here, Beatrice, and Captain Christopher Fellin, who is a handsome, daring soldier who plans to marry Beatrice's friend. Now, this friend has been writing letters back and forth to Christopher, and she's just not that into it. And Beatrice is into it. She likes writing letters, and so she actually gets handed over these letters from her friend, and Beatrice is kind of allowed to be the one writing these letters to him. Um, now the friend gets a little bit bored with him because he's a little bit too, um, let's see if there's a cute picture. There's even a cute, um, he draws a picture of a dog that he meets over there. It's so cute. Um, and she just thinks he's kind of boring and Beatrice doesn't. She thinks he's great. But the thing is, you know, she's writing these letters under her friend's name. So when Christopher ends up getting injured in the war and he actually becomes a hero, well, now, now her friend is like, oh, well, maybe when Christopher gets home, like, you know, maybe I do, maybe I am interested in him now that he's not just a grunt soldier that I'm writing to, but he's a hero. And so that, of course, puts Beatrice in a difficult place because, A, she actually is having some feelings for this man she's been writing letters to, but B, he's going to think that it's someone else. So she's putting herself in a tricky place. But Beatrice, she's going to figure it out for sure. This is a beautiful one. I love everything by Lisa Claypez, but but there's something special about the Hathaways. They're some of the first books that I've read by her and I just love them so much. So definitely recommend. Then the other one that won't be a surprise either is probably To Sir Philip with Love. Yes, I do still read the Bridgertons. I do still love them. Am I going to watch the new season? I don't know. I won't promise yes or no. We'll see. I might have to get kind of drunk to do that, but um, I do enjoy To Sir Philip with Love, and yes, I do happen to have the gorgeous um, step back version of the hardcovers as well, which is great. But anyway, this one is about Eloise Bridgerton, and this book takes a bit of like overlaps a little bit with um, uh, Mr. Bridgerton. Sorry, what is it? Now I just forgot. Because of Mr. Bridgerton? Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Jeez, it's been a long time since I've read it. It's been a while. Um, because Eloise actually sneaks away during one of the balls that's happening to go meet Sir Philip because she has been writing letters with him. Now, the way that it is set up in the books, um, Sir Philip's wife who died was actually a cousin of the Bridgertons. So that is why Eloise first writes him a letter. She writes him a condolence letter after his wife um, has died and he's left with 
two twin, um, well, a set of twins, not two twins. Um, and he doesn't know what to do. And she's written him a letter and he decides to answer it. So it's one of Marina's Bridgerton cousins. And they end up being letter writers to each other. And he ends up needing a mother for his children. And so he thinks, why don't I just propose to this woman? So he proposes to her. Now, Eloise is interested in this. She is a spinster at this point as well, and she's very intrigued. But now she doesn't want 100% commit to this man right away because she's never met him, but she also knows that her family doesn't know anything about these letters she's been writing for all these years. So she does kind of sort of have to sneak away to meet him. And so that's why she uses some of the drama that's happening with Penelope and Colin to be able to sneak away and go meet him. Now, of course, in doing so she is basically guaranteeing that she needs to marry Sir Philip because she has now ruined her reputation and went to stay with him but she meets his kids and his kids are a lot of trouble and she's like I'm used to a lot of trouble I'm from a family of seven siblings we gave my mother a run for her money um and so yeah things are gonna happen from there this is a delightful one I love this whole series so much you know it um, I just don't approve of the way the TV show did it, okay? As you can see by some ranting reviews I did back in the day, right? Right. Okay, let's go through a few more. So now we have some more modern ones. Oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. I have another historical. Whoopsie. I have another historical. Okay, this one also involves kind of sort of some letter writing um, at the beginning of it. Uh, but it only lasts for a short amount of time. There, of course, is when the Earl met his match, of course. And this one actually happens when Phoebe answers an ad that um, our uh, soon-to-be Earl puts in, um, he puts it in the paper that he's looking for a wife and he's looking for all these specific things in a wife. And she just thinks that he sounds ridiculous. So she writes him a letter and is like, are you actually looking for a wife this way? Because this is not a good way to get one. Like, you sound ridiculous and blah, blah, blah. And so they're writing back and forth. And they actually have this great rapport that comes up. And he'd never admit it, but he actually thinks that she's quite clever and very much enjoys this banter that they have. Um, well, then Phoebe finds herself in some trouble. Um, a young man that she had been hoping to marry uh, gets her pregnant and then won't stand by her and her parents want her to go away to a home for unwed mothers and then take her baby from her and force her back into society and so all these things are being made about her and she refuses to let her child be taken from her. So what does she do? She runs off to meet this man who is writing letters to her and she doesn't realize that he is going to be an earl and not only that, she would then be foisting a bastard child upon him. Like she had hoped that he was like a merchant or a wealthy landowner, but like who wouldn't mind. And so really she kind of overestimated all of it and she finds herself in a tricky position. However, Hugh, he is a bit dazzled by her now. He doesn't want to admit that because he is fully not going to marry for love. That is what his father has taught him. He's not going to do it. His father was burned by loving the woman that he married, and so he was determined not to do that. But when Phoebe arrives at his doorstep, um, disheveled and in trouble, he just can't turn her away. And he actually is like, you know what, this is perfect, because if she gives me an heir, even if it's not mine, then I don't have to sleep with her and worry about falling in love with her. <laughs> so yeah, he thinks he's being really smart that way. But yeah, there's just so much about this. This was one of my favorite books from a couple of years ago. I just adore this couple so much and they do start with letter writing. Okay, now we're going to move to some more modern ones. Sorry about that. Okay, let's keep going through the ones that I myself have read. Okay, we have an MM choice right here. We have Top Secret by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy. And this one actually starts with like a hookup app. And it starts with this man who, um, well, they're both in college. And it starts with this one who, for his girlfriend's birthday she wants a threesome and so there is this bisexual guy that he's messaging on this app and they are like okay let's see if maybe we'll want to do this well as they get closer to each other and um you know talk about this happening well he ends up 
breaking up with the girlfriend, but he's still talking with this guy. Um, and little does he know that it's actually kind of like an enemy of his on campus, that they don't get along. Um, but once it gets out, like who each other are, the sexual chemistry that they've been building up is crazy. However, the guy who had had a girlfriend, he doesn't think that he's bisexual. He doesn't, he's never been attracted to men before, but he was willing to try this out for his girlfriend, right? Like it would be all about her. It would be an MM, MFM threesome, right? Like it would be about her. But as he keeps talking with this guy and flirting and kind of, you know, seeing like, well, are you attracted to men? There's something building between the two of them. So this is one where one of them, you know, definitely is in the closet with who he is, but through these interactions and then finding out who each other are, then some experimentation starts happening and then we get going from there. All right, then there's one that this also starts with a computer and like hidden people and that is Photo Finish by Elsie Silver. And this one is actually about Violet Eaton. So if you've read the Chestnut Spring series, you absolutely can read Gold Rush Ranch because it has this crossover here with Violet who she's actually a jockey. And so Violet and I think Cole is the is his name yeah they actually meet on an app and she does sexy things for him but he never shows himself he is um i believe he's a veteran i think this is one where he's a veteran and he has a lot of like dark wounds on his side and so he's not ever planning to show himself to her and she really starts to fall for this guy that she's messaging and when she wants to like meet him and take it further, he box and like breaks it up with her. Now, when he ends up meeting her in real life, he of course knows who she is. He's seen every inch of her body and had many sexy fantasies about her, but she's never seen him. So it is a little bit one-sided at first because he knows who she is. So that's definitely going to put them in a tight spot when we begin. And I also want to say the audiobook of this one just released, so you can absolutely now um, enjoy these books via audio. All right, then um, I already realized I forgot a historical, so who am I pretending that I knew what I was talking about here? There is When the Scot Ties the Knot by Tessa Dare. This is an adorable one. This is a part of her, I don't even remember this series name, but this girl actually was writing fake letters. Well, they weren't fake, like she was writing them, but she thought she was mailing them to a fake man. But the name that she put on these letters is of a man who actually exists, right? And so she wrote these letters to this man who is, you know, in the war, supposedly. And now it turns out that him and his men are coming home from the war, and he needs money and stuff to take care of her. So he shows up at her home with this pack of letters and is going to kind of force her hand into an engagement because he needs it not only for him but for his men and she is this very shy woman she never wanted to get married and that's why she had this fake fiance and she was going to write to him and then you know like pretend he died maybe and then that would get her out of having to marry someone but no he shows up and is like i actually need you to marry me and i'm gonna kind of force you to do it so that is a super clever one. It's also like a one-sided pen pal because he never like writes her back, but she continually sends these letters that are um, not supposed to be real. So there's that. Okay, then um, I did have to pull up a few of these because it's been so long since I've read them. So pardon me, like I have read a few of these ones before we get to the ones that I haven't read, um, but I did have to pull them up so that I wasn't just talking out of my ass while I was trying to talk about them. All right, so we have another one that most people recommend when you talk about um, pen pal romances. We have Punk 57, which is a pen pal romance and then also a like bully romance. It's new adult. And I read this way back when. So this is about Misha and Ryan. And they actually in fifth grade began being pen pals from different schools. Um, and then um, thinking that he was a girl because her name was Misha, the teachers paired them together with Ryan. So Ryan um, is a girl and he was a boy. Um, and they have three rules. There's no social media, no phone numbers, and no pictures. So they were just messaging each other. Um, so then he runs across a photo of the girl online whose name is Ryan and she has all these things about her that are the same as the letter. And he decides that he wants to meet her. But when he meets her, it turns out that they're connected in a way that isn't great. 
So anyway, that's what happens. And then he kind of becomes a bully to her and we see where that goes. So this is definitely old school Penelope Douglas. Um, this is one of the ones of hers that like I loved it when I first read it, but I don't know if I would read it again because I might not feel the same way. But just thought I'd throw it out there because sometimes it feels nostalgic to go back to those times. All right, then we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This one was all the rage a few years back for sure. Actually, Buddy read this one, I believe, with... Did I Buddy read it with Crystal? Oop. But I know it was very emotional for me when I first read it, and I very much enjoyed it. So this one um, has to do with April Whittier, Whittle, Whittler, Whittier, I can't say her name, who she is a big fan of this TV show. So there's this TV show that she's obsessed with and she likes to do um, like cosplay for and write fan fiction for. And then we have Marcus Castor Rupp, who is an actor on the show, and he actually likes to write like fan fiction too. Um, and he's a big star on this. But something that people don't know is he's actually dyslexic and it has been a struggle for him to be very loud truck for him to get where he is now. Um, and so he actually enjoys these fan fictions too. So he does anonymous stories um, online. Um, and he actually has read these stories that this woman has written and he's really liked them. Um, and so when she actually cosplays as who she is, um, she is plus size and she gets horribly made fun of for doing a plus size version of this uh, cosplay and to you know kind of help her feel better Marcus actually asked her out on a date to spite everyone who's being so cruel to her and so on their date he really likes her but he's very awkward in person like he is he's very shy like acting he can do in person he's really shy and so he also like figures out you know who she is and it's this person he's been interacting with online for so long so it's again a thing where it's like a one-sided like he knows more than he says he isn't supposed to share that he you know is writing fan fiction about a show that he's on and everything and so yeah these two are in kind of a tight spot but they're gonna make it work so again this one I really enjoyed this the first time around it like broke my heart in so many ways I loved it I cried over it it was beautiful um, I don't know how I'd feel about it now because I feel a bit different about how Olivia Dade writes plus size characters I mean I know its own voices but just like her journey as a plus size woman is so much different than what my own is and I think there can sometimes be disdain for like skinny people in it and I'm not about that I'm not about like hating back at people because we all have our own insecurities but at the time like again I thought this was a very powerful story and I don't take that back it definitely was so and I loved the aspect of him being the shy one and even though she thinks that she's not confident like she really is more confident than him in certain ways and I like that all right, then there is Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lee. Now, this one has a very, very short amount of the anonymous messaging back and forth. Um, and it happens that there is Jamie and Bia, and they have nothing in common. They have a horrible, like, meat disaster, and so they decide that they both hate each other. But they have people who are trying to play Cupid with them and get them to try again. And so Jamie and Bia have people who, like, hook them up with each other, and they are anonymously messaging and they're really liking this person. And then when they meet up, they realize that it's them. And they kind of want um, revenge on the people who tricked them into a date, I think is how it goes. So they decide to fake date obnoxiously and convince the meddlers that they're madly in love. And then they'll break up and dash everybody's hopes, which is just kind of a ridiculous setup, you know. But you know what? It leads to fun. And some of the things I really loved in this one is it's a reimagining of Much Ado About Nothing and there's some really beautiful like care moments like there's a time where she's sick and the, some things that he does and so there were a lot of things I thought were really cute. Um, the third act conflict of this one was something that I did not love but we make it work okay we make it work so that's one that has a bit in it. A lot of people love Chloe Lee's she has like outpaced me and so much I'm so behind on some of her books but I know people love her so much. 
So those are all the ones that I have read. Okay, those are ones I've read even if I didn't remember them super well. So now I have three recommendations that are ones I have not read, but I want to or I've heard them mentioned a lot. So I'm just going to go through these ones real quick. So there is Dirty Letters by V. Keelan and Penelope Ward. And this one says that um, it's a boy and a girl that they were pen pals when they were young. So it was her childhood pen pal and it's a British boy who couldn't be more different from me. And over the years, through hundreds of letters, we became best friends, sharing our deepest secrets and forming a connection that could never break until one day it did. And then out of the blue, a new letter arrived, <clears throat> a scathing one, one with eight years of pent up anger. And I had no choice but to finally come clean about why I stopped writing. Um, and then Griffin forgives her and somehow they're able to re kindle their childhood connection only now we are adults and that connection has grown into a spark and it's going to turn into a romance so tell me if I should read this one that's what I'll say about that let me know I recently just reread uh, or not reread I recently read a V Keelan for a Patreon book and I haven't read one in a long time and I liked it so let me know if I should read that one all right then there is Dear Aaron by Mariana Zapata. Now, I will tell you, I'm not going to read this one, but I will put it out there for those of you who might be looking for it because this one is a, she signed up to write to a soldier, one letter or email a week for the length of his deployment. Care packages are optional. Been there, done that. She thought she knew what she was going to expect, except she didn't count to fall in love with this guy. So, um, I don't read Mariana Zapata. I know people have their reasons why they're trying to convince me it's not going to happen. It's just one of my like no-go. I'm not going to do it. Um, but I know a lot of people love her. And this is one if you want to read Letters to a Soldier. That this could be this could be a good one for you. And then there's one that I do think I want to read. Because I've read one book by this author before and I really liked it. And then I haven't got around to reading more of hers. But this one is called Hard Time by Kara McKenna. And this one is actually a letter to an inmate. <laughs> so this one says, um, he was big, tall framed, shoulders but not burly. His near black hair was due for a cut, curling around his ears. Dark brows, dark stubble, dark lashes and eyes. And he was handsome, so handsome, it broke your heart. A deck of cards was split between his hands, paused mid-shuffle. Some of the men wore navy scrub tops and bottoms, some navy t-shirts, a few white undershirts. This man wore a tee with cousins stenciled on the front, above the number 802267. Those digits imprinted on my brain burned black as a brand. He watched me, but not the way others did. If he was trying to picture me naked, his poker face was strong, though his attention anything but subtle. His entire head moved as I passed through his domain, but his eyes were languorous, lazy, and half-lidded, yet intense. A hundred looks in one. I didn't like it, couldn't read it, at least with the horny jerk-offs. I knew where I stood. I wondered what the worst thing you could do and still only get sent to a medium security prison was. I hope not to ever learn. And I hoped to heaven it made 802267 hadn't signed up for any of the day's programs. Yeah, so this does have love letters. In that, in that, in that um, intro, I don't see where it was, but I just went to look through some reviews to make sure because, like I said, I get a lot of my recommendations from like um, from Reddit threads and stuff, so I don't always know if it is. But I'm looking through a couple of reviews, and it looks like there were some letters involved. So there we go. So let me know if I should read this one. I like an inmate romance now and then. Now and then. All right, so there we go. Those are some epistolatory slash pen pal slash letter writing romances. Let me know if I missed any of your faves. Let me know which ones you like, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.